thinking of applying for that um, millionaire quiz program. Oh yeah. Hang on. What the hell do you know about general knowledge? That's like more than you. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm a walking encyclopedia, me. I know everything there is to know about everything. We prove it then. Prove what? We prove what I already know. That my mind is vastly superior to your feeble little pea-sized <laughs> brain. And how exactly do you propose we go about doing that? Proving your delusions wrong, that is. Simple. We ask each other questions. You mean a contest? If you like. But on what subjects? Any subjects. Alright, alright. But every contest has a prize of some sort. What's our prize going to be? Whoever answers the first question wrong makes the tea. And does the dishes for a whole week. Oh, the wife is going to love that. You're going to come back here every night, lay on a nice spread and do the dishes for us. Good stuff. I won't have to, pal. I'm going to whoop your ass. I'll buy you some marigolds. I'll make sure you try them first, because you'll be the one losing, pal. Touche. I'm such a gentleman. I'll even let you go first. Any subject, harder the better. OK. When was Hitler born? 20th of April, 1889. And film star Ryan O'Neill was also born on the same day, in 1941. And 100 years to the day after Hitler was born, the Bangles were the UK number one with Eternal Flame. And Deacon Blue had the number one album with When the World Knows Your Name. Fine record that it is. Go on, your turn. Who won the 1959 FA Cup final? Easy. Nottingham Forest beat Luton Town 2-1 in front of 100,000 people at Wembley. Dwight and Wilson score for Forest before Luton pulled one back from Tracy. Ooh, very good. Considering Southport's the only team you've ever been to watch. <laughs> did you actually know Ray Dwight was Elton John's cousin? I did know that. But did you know that he actually broke his leg during that final in 59? So Forest had to finish with 10 men. No subs in those days, remember? capital of Bolivia. Well, Sucre, or Sucur, if you prefer, is the official capital, but government office has been held in La Paz since 1898. Connections to neighbouring Peru are very good by way of Lake Titicaca, I'll have you know. Get an O-level in Spanish, did we, Picasso? <laughs> did you actually know that La Paz was founded by the Spanish in 1548 and it thrived on a strategic location between the Bolivian silver mines and the ocean? This one will get you. Who designed the Chelsea Royal Hospital? Oh, come on. That'd only be a thousand pound question on Millionaire. It's so easy. Sir Christopher Wren completed in 1692. What famous composer was born in 1770? Van Beethoven died 1827. Beatles last UK number one. Single or album? Oh. Ooh. Well, the last of their 17 number one singles was in the June of 69, and that was the Ballad of John and Yoko. They've had numerous compilation albums which have reached the number one slot, the most recent being the number one's collection in November 2000. Here we go. But their last number one studio album was Let It Be, May 1970. Ha! All right, all right. I'm impressed. Mildly. What was the name... Janet Lee's character in Alfred Hitchcock's 1960 film, Psycho. Marion Cray. Who mm. with a black hand? Ooh, tough question for anyone mere mortal, but for someone of my intelligence, not a problem. They were a secret Serbian society, dedicated to the liberation of the Serbs from the Hebzeman and Ottoman rule. It was they who, in June the 28th, 1914, assassinated the Austrian Crown Prince Archduke Ferdinand II, the assassin being the Serb Gavrilo Princip, subsequently starting the First World War. Where was William Wordsworth born? Cumberland. Maths. 2,398 times 19. Come on, come on. You're not a millionaire yet, you know. I need an answer. Don't Quickly. rush me, don't rush me. It takes a bit of time, you know. Do you have time? I'm Jeremy Paxman, not Chris Tarrant. Uh, 45,562. 
subject you know about Russian literature? <laughs> it's a bit vague, isn't it? Any subject. Sounded more like a statement to me, but yeah. never let it be said, never let it be said that I should hide away from it. Oh, no, not you. Early Russian literature consisted largely of chronicles, religious works, the like. And I suppose the outstanding early works considered to be the Song of Igor's Campaign. 1187. Yeah. From the 18th century onwards, though, Russian literature was reborn due to the political reforms of Peter the Great and, of course, the artistic patronage of his wife, Catherine. What do you know about her? Born in 1684, she was the second wife of Peter the Great and became Empress of Russia. She was born of Lithuanian peasant origin. She was captured in 1702 in the Great Northern War and became Peter's mistress. After the death of Peter the Great in 1725, the throne was secured for her. Until her death in 1727. May of 1727 to be exact. <laughs> Look, I've got a feeling we're going to be here some time. What to say? I'll make us another brew and uh, we think of a more worthy prize, yeah? Yeah. Why not? Not a problem. Why not? When was, um... Uh... No, no, no. How many episodes of Mr. Ben were made? Like so many of these seesaw programmes of the 70s and 80s, there were 13 episodes of Mr. Ben, mate. Sure, that's not King Rollo, Barnaby the Bear. Probably King Rollo as well, Grand, Chock-a-Block, Stop Go, Brick-a-Brack, all of them 13 episodes, and then they'd repeat them ad infinitum for the next decade. All right. I'll take your word for it. Do you know Mr. Ben's address? 52 Festive Road, London. All right. Yeah, here's one for you. Six Wives of Henry VIII. Oh. You insult me, sir. Well, go on then, Mr. Encyclopedia. Catherine of Aragon. Yeah. Anne Boleyn. Yeah. Anne of Cleves. Hmm? Jane Seymour. Catherine Howard. And Catherine Park. Whoa. Where's the tea bags? It's your house. How should I? No. No. Tough question, that one. They're only easy if you know them. Indeed they are, my friend. Indeed they are. Come on, cheer up. Only three more days to go. <laughs> anyway, that tea bag one, that wasn't a proper question, wasn't a subject either. Any subject, any question you said, you're just being a sore loser. It wasn't a question and it wasn't a subject. It was a trick question. Listen, just remember to do the pans for me, okay? Oh, pan you. <laughs> do you know the name of the doll on the pass card? Shut up. It's bubbles, by the way. <laughs> 